Hi, and welcome to Genetic Rim Part 2. I am Iken, and this is going to be my hopefully more successful run on the Genetic Rim mod pack. Compared to Part 1, what has changed? I'm using now a few more vanilla expanded mod mods, the cooking and plants expanded, and the pretty new uh, insectoid faction mod as well. So the goal of this series is going to be achieving greatness in genetics things and uh, well for now my uh, goal is a mere mechathrombo or something like that and in between that I'm going to build a base which is heavily building around animals and some heavy use of science. Every one of these people here will have a focus on animals and science or they're not going to get some noble title in the series. So this is another role-playing aspect. Speaking about role-playing, these guys here have a little story interconnected between them, which will I will unravel between the episodes. And yeah, so we're going to fortify this place. And since I don't want to um, drag along the series uh, for a endless time and since part one covered already up a lot of genetic, genetic rim experience my plan is to um, play a little bit more between the episodes to get the colony up and running a little bit faster so that we're going to have a genetic laboratory around episode three or four already instead of waiting for like one episode 10 or such and yeah let's get going enough of the talking and if you like this series and this uh, kind of content drop my channel a subscription and you won't miss any future content of mine all right first things first we have to allow those things and you know the drill so many restarts and it never gets really old for me i love that feeling don't you so with well, these guys the story goes like that um, Jackalope is, together with her father Sissy, um, founding this new monster farm. Jackalope is a renowned professor. She was once a small town kid. She's kind of a greedy person, but she's a kind soul. She can't hurt a fly, even. And uh, she's nimble. And like I said in the beginning, we have a focus on animals and intellectual things. She's good at social things, having a lot of useful uh, passions as well. Her father, Sissy, I didn't make that up, I came to that. Um, it's a super immune, hardworking, kind person. He was a story writer as a kid. I don't know how you can evolve from a story writer to a medi medieval doctor unless it was something like, I want to be an author. No boy, you have to cure the horses. Whatever might have, might have been the case together with his daughter, he's here. He's an artist, actually. Well, maybe he's here to fulfill his uh, childhood dreams. Who knows? He's also a hell of a brawl and good doctor. And like I said before, animal and intellectual passions are there. And well, then there's Bundy. Bundy Lynch is the ex-lover of Jackalope. I'm not entirely sure how he ended up here, but he's too smart, he's bisexual, and he's nimble too. The rest is up to your fantasy. This guy is incapable of firefighting, he's the mailman too. I just, uh, I just love that combo. And <laughs> the mailman is also good at <laughs> mining and plants. So very high skill at animals and, well, there's a passion for intellectual things as well, so Bundy is also eligible for the noble ranks and he's good at melee, but apart from that, nothing that, uh, nothing like that. I'm also playing on these difficulty settings, if you're interested here, Blood and Dust on Cassandra Classic because I just ended up liking her uh, challenge curve here a lot, and yeah. Major difficulties here will be Jackalope being incapable of violence uh, overall and neither Bundy nor Sissy are good shots and I, I like that combo because it felt like kind of a um, challenge. So enough of the talk. Uh, I like to talk about these things but now it's enough. I felt like I wanted to barricade myself up in this area. It's just so easy to defend in these dimensions, and it's also a good area to do some killboxing later. I don't know yet, 
but for the time being I'm going to set up a few simple structures as usual so I feel like I'm going to dwell in this vicinity here so let's go for freezer here workstation area here warehousing here and sleeping areas over here I'm going to designate um, some more room already for sleeping areas because I'm playing in a temperate forest biome and wood would wood will never be a problem so I can build quite widespread to begin with oh be gone be gone wrong priorities so I'm going to go for my usual and favorite go-to uh, thing one for construction one for tree cutting and one for hauling and this way I accommodate a lot of working power in the early game with three people that just works out quite nicely all right so that's that let's start with another thing here I want to uh, forbid these areas here because they're not that important yet um, the other structures are more important so um, to give you a rough estimation of what's uh, ahead on the schedule here between this episode and the next one I want to build up the basic uh, infrastructure of this colony here with the workshops and science a little bit of a agriculture thing and some more base design concepts as well for today the um, basic topic is doing this whole colony going to designate spaces and uh, survive a little bit because there's a lot of uh, groovy things running around here we have dinosaurs because uh, you'll see in the mod list down below in the description that I have enabled pretty much everything the genetic rim has to offer. We have Eldritch, we have Archaeogenetic, Megafauna, Alpha Genetic, and B Genetics because I run everything in this series. It's a little bit uh, intense, but I don't care. <laughs> Honestly, it's so much fun to run all these uh, crazy things. I don't want to go without them anymore. And I think here is going to be the um, workshop area because this looks just so good um, to bring up a little building up there, which will be then my starter workshop. The anima tree doesn't agree with us, but well, Jackalope and Sissy, well, Jackalope especially, we're all people of science here. And this anima tree, it's something to research at best, but nothing to uh, adore or such. We're no savages here. Um, talking about savages, I would rather um, would uh, build a rec room rather early in this uh, settlement because I feel like it's it should be done that way so well this is too far away from uh, the main business and commotion um, at the same time I don't want to have the rec room in this vicinity here although it's quite tempting but I want to have some room to expand the warehousing into and I think this could be warehousing after all so no um well why not do the rec room right there in between the middle of this of the things there's going to be a table where we're going to eat and yeah that's good all right I love the uh, basic setup of settlements a lot and here I went for this place so we're living really deep in the south because I love endless summer settings this is just uh, one of my favorites agriculture is so easy in those areas and honestly with all these mod 
packs enabled, I have more than enough to care about. So we're having year-round forages and to um I, I like this spot because trading is very um well possible everything is connected with roads here i have like four trade partners in my vicinity but none of them is really easily accessible i like that so this spot is was, was like i get everything i want to but it's not that easy like that really really like that because uh, trading, well, trading can make your game a little bit too easy, in my opinion, and it's uh, sometimes a little bit. I'm a little bit sad about it because I love trading, but sometimes I feel like it's a little bit uh, too easy to earn your silver in uh, Rimworld. If you if you get my idea. All right, so um, Bundy and Sissy. I'm going to give Sissy the uh, plus steel knife because the melee rating is just uh, way ahead of that. So Sissy is going to get the bold action rifle as well. Uh, this goes for its sidearm. And Bundy is going to get the revolver. And that's the amount of weapons we have. Okay. Um... With this area being my workshop, this means I can dump my chunks somewhere around here. Let's uh, let's uh, call out the chunks right here. Chocolate eggs, Paragon, Paragon bunnies. We're going to get there one day. So chunks, preferred spot, and we're going to call this the chunk yard. There we go. Okay. Now I have somewhere to put all these things. There's a fat turkey sitting around there. Mm. Quite tempted to pick this thing up, but for the time being, right now, oh, well, these uh, four bit things. Oh no! Oh gosh. I just wanted to allow things, but then I deleted it all. <laughs> Oopsie. Well, it's not that terrible. The designations were quite easy. And simple to reconstruct. Okay. Luckily all the doors remained. Okay. Looks like we're not going to uh, have a shelter for everybody tonight, but family business was too slow. I'm really looking forward to the new Janet, uh, to for the new uh, vanilla expanded mods because neither the cooking nor the insectoid mod I used too much yet. While I'm, I'm very, very happy with my Empress Evil series, on the other side, which has all these mods enabled too, but losing is fun with the Empress Evil Storyteller doesn't give you quite the time and feeling to experiment with your uh, with your food. You, you feel more like your food yourself, but that's another story. So um, yeah, we're having some nice sleep out. Well, so Jack Jackalope is sleeping in the warehouse. And uh, Bundy and Sissy had a nice sleep out there. So my personal working theory here is uh, that Bundy, the mailman, was uh, betraying both Sissy and Jackalope at the same time. That's why he's bisexual, you know. So he's with them somehow. I guess they they got past their problems and now they're a happy bunch. At least that's what, how I'm envisioning a modern family in the 56th century. <laughs> So, drop me a comment if, about what's your story between Bundy, Sissy, and Jackalope. I would be very, very curious about your interpretation of uh, <laughs> of the things. All right. So, now we're talking business. Things are finally getting done down there with the living areas, and we're having more than enough trees available here to get things done. A few apples. Whoa, Bundy and Jackalope. Wait a sec. Bundy tries to uh, to hit on Jackalope again, 
So Bundy charmed Jackalope by comparing her to a breathtaking river. Jackalope gave a minimal response. <laughs> oh man, that's quite romantic, but uh, she just, uh, she just, she's just not feeling it. Okay. There we go. Next things, the usual few. The usual few things. So I enable all the foods up here for the freezer area. And I want the herbal meds in here too. I don't know. Emu fat ointment. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but we're going to find out. Okay. So that's the storage spot for all the foods. And let's do a door in between here. And some, well, how do I produce energy in this run for the early go, yeah, for the early game? Am I going to go for generators or not? That's the main question. Wind or generators? I mean, wind is quite painful in the temperate forest to begin with because you're having just a hell of a job to uh, keep those trees in, uh, out of your wind turbines, basically. So, nah. going for some uh, old-fashioned generator for the starters and haven't decided yet where where it's going to end but the generator is going to be in the kitchen i like that idea so electric stove and butcher table going to the freezer it's always important never have butcher table and stove in the same room because the blood is very very dirty um, and that's provoking food poisoning quite hard so two coolers to begin with i'm going to uh, upgrade that in the future but we're not really having the um the amount of power necessary to accommodate more more coolers so I think that should be everything possible with one power generator for the time being. Let's uh, drop some conduits now. And I hope I have the construction skill to, uh, <laughs> to fulfill that. So, well, I have enough for the wood-fired generators. Awesome. I'm relieved now. <laughs> okay. Let's remove those chunks because I don't like uh, to have chunks in my base area vicinity. Neither do I like trees in front of, in front of doors. Okay, basic structures are progressing now. Awesome. I'm harvesting more than enough wood. In this series, I'm going to try to. Uh, learn from my mistakes from the last time i well i'm i'm not really sad that i have to restart but i'm sad that i didn't destroy more centipedes before the old colony died well i learned that um you can't tackle a large army of centipedes with melee anymore unless you have a really good army at your disposal with uh high durability but well you have to learn the hard way that some strategies work against uh, some situation and work in some situations and in others they won't work but well i love games uh, which have this uh, kind of learning depth i mean i'm playing rim world now for years and it doesn't grow old to me that's <laughs> the best part about that. Okay, so new cooking options. Uh, strange meals. We have bake, fine bake, lavish bake, gourmet bake, desserts. What do I need to do desserts? So I can use berries and uh, 
Oh, so all the fruits are uh, eligible to do desserts. And, well, desserts give recreation. That's awesome. So I should do desserts uh, forever. And simple meals, well, let's see. Gourmet meals, rose tea, that's something which I shouldn't be respecting too much. Okay, so uh, simple meals will be on the table as well. I'm, um, well, we're, we're three people, so nine should be more than enough. That's three rations per person. You don't, normally you don't need that amount, but well, I like that to have some stuff for caravaneering available as well. So I'm disabling the uh, fruit now from the um, simple meals just in case the dessert uh, bill wanders somewhere else in the time being. Right now, um, there will be always everything processed before they start cooking the simple meals. So what's my animal? A pug. Prissy. Prissy and Sissy. Oh <laughs> my god, they're even bonded. Oh, I like that. Well... That's uh, part two of the monster farmers. That's even more monstrous than part one ever was. <laughs> if you ask me. But when I rolled up that bunch, I really, uh, I really like what happened there. Usually, when I start a new series, I roll up my colonists until they start telling a story to me. It, it took a while with this uh, attempt, but I'm quite happy where <laughs> where it got. So there we have it, basic uh, basic outpost done. I really love the two steam geysers here. Uh, there are no three even at directly at my doorstep, so <laughs> we're going to have a good time with those. I I need another door here for uh, entering the rec room. I'll do a a two table solution here. There we go. I like this idea. So we're going to stool this accordingly. Okay. A lot of wood constructions for now, but well, we have to start somewhere. Oh, and the holy, the holy recreation item has to be done. So I'm going to do it out of silver for good luck. Because I always feel like this is uh, meaning good luck to make it out of silver. So there we go. I like this place. Long-term plans will be using the mountain here to uh, grow into this uh, area here. And uh, overall, I'm, I'm sticking with the plan of going for a heavily defended uh, mountain base full of genetic monstrosities and a little bit more of uh, a little bit more sensible preparations this time because uh, on the last playthrough, just I went um, uncautious, I'd say, and I was pretty uh, inexperienced with um, the firepower of genetic and animals in general. But well, I like the learning process. And now we do this butchering forever, but I'm going to reduce the ingredient radius. Oh, and same goes for these recipes. Always increase. The ingredient radius. I really uh, consider this for me personally. You can do uh, something else if you find something better for yourself. I don't mind. And you shouldn't either. But decreasing those uh, ingredient radiuses uh, <clears throat> stops your colonists from running all across the map for some certain thing. So Jackalope is now going for cooking jobs as well. Boom. Desserts. Apple desserts. There we go. 
And it turns out I'm out of wood already. So let's chop some more. And that's a very, very good start. I'll put up some walls around this place rather early, I think. But, well, I don't need to rush anything. There are no super deadly predators in this area. Well, Temperate Forest holds its promise of being um, one of the easiest starting biomes. Those dinosaurs are looking funky, but they're not really dangerous at all. There are no predators, so they're not going to start to manhunt my people unless some crazy animal does make them ag aggressive on my people. But let's not... Uh, Let's not think about that further, shall we? <laughs> Visitors, no. I'm playing with a hospitality mod because I just love that. But most of the time I don't uh, hit the spot where I have the amount of uh, hospitality room uh, prepared. But well. So this area here looks like a wonderful kill corridor. Like here, boom. Can do some wonderful kill box action here. And we're going to uh, have some really good options for defense down here as well. So this place is real, as most mountain bases, is, it's really good for well to um, defend. But we're going to have infestations for sure. Every mountain base has infestations. You won't be running mountain bases without those. So let's uh, run for last bed. Come on, sissy. Sissy and his pup Prissy. I, right. I can't believe this is all procedurally generated. I didn't touch it. I, I promise, really. It's just. Uh... Come on. Let's. Uh... Let's uh, give that dog a home. <laughs> This is one of the most uh, impressive, uh, impressive deeds of RNGs in my life. If you didn't believe in RNGs, now you should. I do for sure. Alright, so look at that place here. It's basically made for uh, a <clears throat> research table. Maybe I should put it deep. Oh yeah, let's... Uh, actually do it like this because this way I can do put the file cabinets right next to that this will be quite fine okay all right so this is the beginning of a really really long road of course so um, the beginning the beginning phase will be way longer than I want to record it this time I did this a lot on the first part of the Genetic Rim series and, well, if you want to look uh, at a more detailed version of that, it's already available. I don't want to do that a second time. So because of that, I'm going to uh, research a lot of things in between the episodes and geothermal power will be a basic necessity alongside of the gun turrets. The genetic research is also completely non not researched and well the schedule for this series will be basically I'm going to re I'm going to record whenever some milestone or crisis will happen so I'm going to keep you updated with the uh, news on the monster farm so we're going to have a little bit more of a organized and tidied up um, experience this time because that's going to be a lot of fun for all of us I'd say all right I already have the stone cutting table available do I have anybody up for crafting so here's the difficult question who's to craft I think I'm going to send Bundy for the crafting business though because he's uh, his schedule fits it uh, quite well. All right, so I want to call out some agriculture as well. 
something like that. This small area here is dedicated for some heal roots. Oh, I don't have it yet. So I'm going to go for some smoke leaf instead. Um, we're going to use this for some corn. There are a lot of new plants here which make um, the cooking a lot more diverse. So uh, why not go for some more, some tomatoes and let's uh, expand that a little bit. I want to have some cotton here as well. So I'm breaking this up a little bit to have a, um, some more variety here. So let's say some pumpkins too and small patch of beets. Yeah, what? oh, I don't have enough skill for that. Eggplants, why not? Just want to make sure that I have some diversity to play around with because all of this uh, mod is very, very new to me and I want to uh, have some fun with that. There's a mad rat here. Put it down. Um, let's uh, go for some new policy here. Also some new policies. And let's uh, check out that mad rat. Wow, what a shot right into the kidney. Bundy made a uh, short work of that of that nasty beast. He protected his ex uh, his ex uh, lover. It's uh, so good that it's not even a ex wife; it's a ex lover, I like that. Okay, so Jackalope will do research after hauling business is done. This is uh, if for experienced RimWorld players, this is pretty much uh, a statement of the word never, but it's okay. Actually, right now there's nothing to haul. I'm amazed, but it's a lie. There's always something to haul. Okay, so a Toa marble. What do we have? Dunite. Let's discover the colors of this place. Tometsukite. And what's that? Lures light. A lot of greens. Like that. Lures light. And then there's slate. Just putting up all the different stone types in this area. There's a lot of them in this playthrough because I love to have extra stone types. Colors are just so much fun. Can't get enough of them. All right, so uh, that's all of them. Okay, next step is to decrease the ingredient radius here as well before my colonists go nuts with uh, all the stones around them as well. And then configure something like that. And that's my basic uh, configuration for stone blocks beginning with 200 of each type to make sure I'm not having uh, a too crowded um, storage here I'm going to uh, store my blocks this time here usually I store them out uh, outdoors but I have such a large workshop this time I feel like this is quite a nice way to go and I feel like it's time to say uh, goodbye for this episode I'm going to uh, do what I have announced and episode 2 will feature a little bit more of that beautiful place and if you like this series please feel free to drop it a like share it with your friends make it a little bit more public to show Google YouTube and all the other machine gods that you liked what you saw. I would deeply appreciate that. And most of all, I hope you enjoyed your stay and hope you're coming back again. And until then, mm -hmm. have a good time and goodbye.